Please be seated. Let, Let me first, first of all acknowledge the, the presence of our Commander-in-Chief, the President of, of the Republic of South Africa, Mr. Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa. Say welcome. And let, and let me acknowledge the entire family, the Fakus Umama, the entire clan. Good morning to you all. Let me acknowledge the entire congregation. I'm going to leave the other protocols to the MCs of the program. Mine right now is to call upon the AFM representative, Pastor Peterson, to come forward to do the opening prayer. Pastor Peterson, opening prayer. Let us pray. Our most gracious Lord, eternal Heavenly Father, we come to your throne of grace this morning. We come to your grace because we need thee more than ever before. I pray that this service will bring comfort to the family. I pray that the balm of Gilead today may bring comfort to those who grieve. I pray for restoration in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray that through this service today, we will also glorify your name. You are indeed the great I am, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You say your word, blessed are those that mourn, for they, they shall, shall be comforted. I pray, I pray for, for your word that it will penetrate the hearts and bring comfort and peace to the morning. I also pray for every participant in this program. May be wise words of comfort, direction, and hope as we glorify you in the sacred moment of God where man is united with his Creator. He help us to remember, today you remain the great I am. Bless us today with your comforting presence. Bless us today with your presence as never before. And bring hope in a time of grief. I pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A young king who stood for unity, who stood for development, a young king who stood for progress. I have a sense that we have been robbed. Providence has robbed us of this young king who could still have contributed so much more to the development of our country. We can say that rather than mourn him today, we should use this occasion as a celebration of his short life. We should use this occasion also as an encouragement for us to do much better on the dreams that he had, dreams of development, dreams of improving the lives of our people in this part of our country. Umti omkulu uwile, sitige la lani ngeba ni namampondo. Bofaku, bonya uza siti, singu hulumeni, akwe sanga unga ishiyo. Siti, be at peace as you remember him, as you mourn him, as you use his life as a great encouragement to go on with what he stood for. Niabuleh. On the program, it is said that I will deliver the sermon, but I had a discussion with the Queen Mother and we agreed that the president 
of the Apostolic Faith um, Mission Church in South Africa be afforded an opportunity. And I will now ask that Pastor Kumalo to come and introduce the speaker, the, sorry, the preacher of the day, and thereafter he will hand back to me. Thank you. Death is so painful and chaotic. Nevertheless, it is a gateway to eternal life. Put my tears in your bottle. Ita inyembezami echubin. The bereaved family, Her Majesty, the Queen Mother, who is the member of the Apostolic Faith Mission of South Africa. Therefore, the leadership of our church, the top leadership decided that we should come here as top leadership and convey our sympathies, not by words, but also by being present. Earlier on, our deputy president of our church opened in prayer. I will then ask our general treasurer Pastor Rudy Kutsen to come and pray for the ministry of the word. Thereafter, I'll call the preacher. Thank you. Let's bow our heads and I'll close our eyes and pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this moment that we can just bow before you, our God and our King. Thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, that you sent to this earth to die for us on a cross. Luke chapter 2, reading from verse 22 to verse 32. And when the time came for the purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought up Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. A pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ and he came in the spirit into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation that you've prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to generation, to Gentiles, and for the glory to your people, Israel. I'm taking the title of my sermon from the words of Simon when he said, now, Lord, let your servant depart in peace. 
I want to highlight three things from uh, the statement that was made by this man called Simon. We are told that he was a man who was upright, a man of integrity, a devout man who would not miss a session in the temple. So by all accounts, when you look at this man, he had everything. But the scripture says, it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he has seen Christ. And when he came to the temple and embraced the child, having seen Jesus, he wished now that he would uh, depart in peace. Why did Simon ask this request to the Lord? It is because Simeon understood that having Jesus in his arms and close to his chest meant that he was embracing the possibility of a good relationship with God. That is why he was saying, if my relationship with God has been restored through Christ, then I'm ready to exit this life in peace. John the Baptist, saying Jesus in John 1, verses 11 and 12, said, he came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become the children of God. Paul, writing to the Galatians, in Galatians 4, verses 6 and 7, writes and says, and because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. And he continues and he says, now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. Simeon wanted more than just being a church member. He wanted more than just a good CV. He wanted to have a relationship with God. And when he held Jesus in his arms, he said, now, Lord, let your servant Depart in peace. May you not depart this life without Jesus in your life. My Savior and my Lord. Secondly, when Simeon said, now let your servant depart in peace, it was because he realized that in Jesus Christ, he did not only have the possibility of the relationship with God, but he also had the possibility of the resurrection from death. He wanted more than just a relationship with the church. He wanted more than just accolades from people. He wanted a relationship with God, and he also knew that one day he would leave this world and he wanted an assurance that when I die, there is a possibility that I will live again. And of course, Jesus remained the obvious fact of resurrection in that his only tomb 
is the only one that remains empty. So he has gone through what he has promised us. When Jesus spoke to Martha in John 11 verse 25, he said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even though they die, they will live. Simeon had the resurrection life in his hand. Yes, Paul again speaking to the Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 22 and 23 said, Just as everyone dies... Because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. But there is an order to this resurrection. Christ was raised as the first of the harvest. Then all who belonged to Christ will be raised when he comes back. But number three... When Simeon said, let your servant depart in peace, it was not only the issue of a relationship. It was not only the issue of a resurrection, but it was also the issue of redemption from sin. When he held Jesus and he looked at himself, and though he could not leave with all the accolades, he knew that Jesus came to pay the price that he could not pay. When John the Baptist saw Jesus in John 1 and verse 29, John the Baptist called out and said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes the sin of the world away. He is the only precious Lamb of God. He is the only one that is assigned to make it possible for our redemption through his blood. Paul in Ephesians 1 and verse 7, he says in him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins according to the riches in his glory. And now Simeon, he knew, if I have Jesus I have a relationship with God. If I have Jesus, I have resurrection from death. If I have Jesus, I have the redemption from sin. So Simeon had a key and he thought, now I'm ready to go. Let me conclude by this narrative of the three young Africans who were attending an important meeting in New York. And when they came back from their session, arriving at the foyer and seeing so many people milling around, they were told that there was load shedding even in New York at the time. And the lifts were not working. So these three young men decided among themselves that they will climb the stairs. But then they said, we need to keep each other going. And one said, I've got a very long story to tell. And then the other one said, I'm full of humor. The last one said, unfortunately, I only have bad news. I hope I won't be able to relate them today. So they started with one, with a long story, because they were accommodated high on the 40th floor. And this guy kept on telling stories, tell a lot of stories, told a lot of stories, kept them going. His stories gave them fuel. Till they went past 30th floor, only about nine to go, and the one with a lot of humor, started telling humor, and of course they slowed the pace. When they were about to come to their room, the last one said, 
please, you have had your chance. Let me also give you my bad story for the day. And they all listen. Is it the sad news I'm having for you guys? Is that after all the struggles, walking the 39th floors, we have forgotten the key to our room. We are not going to be able to enter our room. So Simeon had the key. And when he had the key, he said, let your servant depart. Let us just pray. Father, thank you that we can call you our Father, our Heavenly Father, that all of us together today can know you by that name, that you love us, that you care for us as your children. And Lord, today together we pray for the Amapondo nation. In this time of bereavement, we pray for comfort, the comfort of your Holy Spirit, the comfort, Lord, of your presence, but also the comfort of your guidance. Lord, we pray for this nation for wisdom. We pray for this nation that you will truly guide them and lead them in this time, in a time of unity. They will experience that you, by your Spirit, unite them and make the unity strong in the name of Jesus, our Lord. And Father, we pray that same prayer for this beautiful part of the Eastern Cape, that there will truly be development as we heard earlier. And Lord, we pray the same prayer for our country, South Africa, that you will unite us, that you will guide us in peace, that you will bless our leaders, that we will truly be a country under God, living up to all that you have in mind for us. Thank you for that, Father. I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen.